Hi everybody, welcome back to The Old Warlock, I'm Alex. I'm Jim. And today we're going to be talking about... D&D stuff. As usual. Early D&D stuff. In particular, something out of the Alarms and Excursions magazine from Al 1975. 1975, Alarums. Alarums. And Excursions. Which and is Excursions. A, there's, a, there's a whole story behind that title. Mm -hmm. But um, what are we talking about, you might ask? Alarums and Excursions is a fanzine that first came out, like you were saying, in 1975. June of 1975. And it is, I think, it holds the record for being the longest continuous running fanzine ever as far as role-playing games are concerned. It is, I believe, it is still in production. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have to check on that and then I'll put something here to say if yes or no it is. But I picked up uh, 15 copies of, well, the first 15 editions of Alarms and Excursions or digital copies of them. You can still purchase them from the person who was the original editor, a woman by the name of Lee Gold. Who is just a she's just done a lot of really cool stuff over the years. But I got these because and I got them two years ago, maybe, because I am, as you know, uh, any of our viewers know, uh, I'm all about the D and D history. And so I thought that we would present a little bit of information out of some of the well, the first two editions of alarms and excursions uh, that are related to how Gary Gygax saw D and D in 1975 because i thought yes. this is really interesting mm -hmm. so without further ado without further ado let's look at alarms and excursions D, &D fanzine from 1975. Mm -hmm. uh so on to what we were talking about alarms and excursions the there is so much information in these. Uh, if you want to learn about early D&D, there is so much information in Alarms and Excursions about the way people saw the game, the way people played the game, uh, new ideas, where ideas came from. And there's, there's also a very strong recognition of different areas of the country playing the game in different ways. And they recognize mm -hmm. that. There, there's always reference of... The Los Angeles group plays it this way. The Sacramento group plays it this way. So to me, that's really interesting. And we'll get into that kind of thing in another video. But again, what I wanted to talk about today was uh, the second issue Gary Gygax actually sent in some information because Lee Gold sent Gary the first copy of Alarms and Excursions I don't know if she meant to do it because of some of the comments about D&D. &D. I, I think it was more just, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could get Gary Gygax to mm -hmm. have some content in our magazine? Understandably so. Right. But there was one thing in that first edition that Gary Gygax received that actually kind of attacks Gary Gygax. And this is like a year after Dungeons & Dragons has been... Exactly. The Allfather? Yes. And I know there are going to be people out there who are going to argue that he's not the old father, but, but we really like Gary Gygax yeah. because he was a driven game designer and he is yeah. the one who brought D&D &D to the masses. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, he's the one who's so behind it. So watch it. And he was very creative and he added no end of content to Dungeons & Dragons. So we are fans of Gary Gygax. We're not knocking anybody else, but we don't knock Gary for the most part. We don't, and you better not either. So he gets mad. So... In the first edition of Alarms and Excursions, there was a man by the name of Ted Johnston. And he, there, were, there were several people. Uh, I, I don't know all of the characters, all the players in this early uh, fanzine, but Ted Johnston appears quite regularly, making Ted. comments about how the game should be played, what he thinks, how, how he thinks rules should be interpreted. And there was one... You're out there, Ted. There was, Say hi. Oh, yeah. We'd love to hear from you, Ted. And there is one section uh, here that is addressed to directly to Gary Gygax, as I said. I'm going to read it. Ted Johnston said, however, and this is in, there were, he was talking about a lot of other things, but he, he just narrows in in this one paragraph on Gary Gygax. He says, however, on a larger subject, on a larger subject, sorry, I am a supporter of the slogan, in quotation marks, D&D &D is too important to leave to Gary Gygax. Quote, unquote. 
Uh, Gary has produced other games in the past. The problem has been that they are not interesting in their full form. They tend to be flawed by simple, bad solutions to complex problems. And he's not talking about um, RPGs. He's talking about war games mm. in, the, in this particular case. Because Gary did develop a lot of war games in, in conjunction with other people. The problem has been that they are not interesting in their full form. They tend to be flawed by simple, bad solutions to complex problems. Um, then he, the crux of this is that he's talking about magic use. He goes on to say, and I'll just read this one sentence. Thus, in Gary Gygax's game, a magic user gets to use one gets to use each spell once a day. But that's not really my focus on this. My focus is the quote: "D and D is too important to leave to Gary Gygax." So, at this time, there were people who were, as people were developing their own styles, their own ways of playing, mm. they were there was almost a pushback against TSR and Gary Gygax having anything to do with the game. It was almost as though they were trying to keep them from doing anything creative with the game mm -hmm. at the table level. Mm -hmm. It's like TSR was, you know, put your fist down and we're not going to let you do anything uh, outside of what we tell you you can do. But let's move on to Gary Gygax's response in addition to <gasps> of Alarms and Excursions. What will he say? Stay tuned to find out. I gotta pull up the thing on my iPad here. I've only got digital copies. To entertain the people for a second. Elevator music starts now. I have a slow iPad. I have, well, okay, I have a slow internet connection. Yeah. Ah, here we go. So, in response, <clears throat> and this is one. I'm going to read this. This is this is a bit lengthy. Mm. Uh, there are a number of different places here where. Gary addresses Ted Johnson, Johnston. First part, um, Dave and I disagree on how to handle any number of things. He's, refer he's referring to Dave Arneson, the, the person who uh, developed D&D &D with Gary Gygax. Dave and I disagree on how to handle any number of things. <clears throat> and both of our campaigns differ from the rules found in D&D. &D. Okay, there's, there's number important one. Important point number important, one. Important point, point number one. Gary does not use all of the rules. Right. Our campaigns differ from the rules found in D&D. If the time ever comes when all aspects of fantasy are covered and the vast majority of its players agree on how the game should be played, D&D will have become... S oh, sorry. D&D will have become staid and boring indeed. Sorry, but I don't believe that there is anything desirable to, in having various campaigns playing similarly to one another. D&D is supposed to offer a challenge to the imagination and to do so in many ways. Perhaps the most important is in regard to what the possibilities of a given situation are. If players know what all the monster parameters are, what can be expected in a given situation, exactly what will happen to them if they perform thus and so, most of the charm of the game is gone. There's no mystery, there's no fun. Exactly. Frankly, the reason I enjoy playing in Dave Arneson's campaign is that I do not know his treatments of monsters and such like, so I must keep thinking and reasoning in order to survive. And this is like canon at our table. We, mm -hmm. Any of the, those of you who have watched any of our videos know that we like danger. We like, you know, the, the, the focus has to be on stress. survivability. Um, there are things in the world far more powerful than you. And, and you just need to accept that, and you need to think your way around those obstacles in order to keep your character alive. Yes. This, and this really ties, you know, I've been playing this game since 1978, so this is, I started playing three years after this was published. I, it's not like I read this article and it had a direct impact on me, but mm -hmm. the game and all of the people that I ended up learning the game from at that time all had this same outlook on how D&D should be played. Let me continue. Um, now, for example, he makes a reference to Mr. Johnston, that we just, the person who, uh, I'm going to say it, attacked Gary Gygax yeah, in, yeah. in the first, did it, in the first yeah. copy. Hatefully and Even bitterly. Even so, Ted Johnston, I'd still like to hear from you. Yeah, we're not mad um, now, now, for example, if I made a proclamation from on high which suited Mr. Johnston, it would certainly be quite unacceptable to hundreds or even thousands of other players. My answer is, and always has been, if you don't like the way I do it, change the bloody rule to suit yourself and your players. d 
D&D enthusiasts <clears throat> are far too individualistic and imaginative a bunch to be in agreement, and I certainly refuse to play God for them except as a referee in my own small campaign where they jolly well better toe the mark. So uh, this early, this early quote, this early information from Gary distinctly shows that he saw, at least at this time, he saw D&D as being a series of guidelines. I mean, and even later on, when you get into AD&D, um, you have the Dungeon Master's Guide. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like the Dungeon Master rules, it's the Dungeon Master's Guide. Yeah. Let me continue just a little bit more, <clears throat> because I really find this stuff interesting, and I figure if you're with us this far, you If you're too. still here, yeah. Uh, in the, continuing his response that appeared in uh, the second uh, copy of Alarms and Excursions. Mm -hmm. I desire variance in interpretation, and as long as I am editor of the TSR line and its magazine, I will do my utmost to see that there is as little trend towards standardization as possible. Big, that's a big thing there. That, mm -hmm. That's a big word. Mm -hmm. Standardization. Little trend towards standardization. I guess that's words. Yeah. Each campaign should be a variant, and there is no official interpretation from me or anyone else. If a game of Dungeons and Beavers... Now, this is a game that used to run... That somebody else used to run. I believe it was in Southern California, which was apparently much more violent. I need to find out more information about Dungeons and Beavers. I've heard of it in several different places, but I don't know a lot about it. Uh, anyway, if a game of Dungeons and Beavers suits a group, all I say is more power to them. For every fine referee runs his own variant of D&D anyway. To sum up, please inform Ted Johnston that I too subscribe to the slogan, D&D is too important to leave to Gary Gygax. Gosh and golly, whoever said anything else? However, pal, Best remember that it is far too good to leave to you or any other individual or little group either. Well said, Gary. I, that, yeah, Gary, you know, yeah. That's it. It now belongs to the thousands of players enjoying it worldwide, most of whom will probably never hear of you or your opinions. Now, I wish he would have stopped there, <laughs> personally. But he goes on. Let me reread that. Most of whom will probably never hear of you or your opinions unless... You get them into the Strategic Review, which was a TSR publication at the time. As soon as we can manage it, we intend to have we we <clears throat> excuse me. We intend to ex we tend to we. <laughs> I'm going to stop here and I'm going to slowly ease into this sentence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can do it. I know I can. Well, I, I think I can. Okay. As soon as we can manage, ma wow. As soon as we can manage it. We intend to have expanded strategic review, published bi monthly, publish it bi monthly, and include a letter column. So he's not even, in a way, I think that he's actually trying to be a bit humorous here in saying, Hey, Ted, nobody's ever going to hear from you unless you send something into to our magazine. Our brand new so, publication. Because then you've got dialogue. And that's one of the things that we try to have going on here. There are a lot of you who have disliked, well, no, we, we do like to do that. We do. Because we've had um, some controversial, well, a controversial video or two. See if you can figure out which one it is. But it's also our most popular video. By far. And there's a lot of dialogue going back and forth. And I mean, it's, We don't it's, participate in any of it anymore. We don't because it's taken on a life of its own. We don't even know what most of the comments are because no, they're comments we, back and forth between viewers. Yeah, people have arguments in the comment section of that video. But... Discussion is the way that you develop ideas and improve upon what you're thinking about. And I think that's what our good friend Gary is really getting at here. That is, that is what I think as well. Um, and King Gary. Well, but, see, but see, he wouldn't have wanted to be. He says right there, he doesn't want to be. It's like George Washington. George Washington didn't want didn't to be want king that, He didn't, want that, third, he didn't so, want that third um, term. And he turned it down. Basically, what we can take from this is that Gary Gygax and George Washington are very similar okay let's, let's not go down there. Oh, okay sorry anyway i just thought it would i thought this was interesting because um there is an argument that later on gary changed his tune on this which i can't necessarily blame him for. i don't either because he had I, become a very wealthy man by that point and was realizing well, perhaps it, the profitability of what he had created 
And and if you read, say, the um, the introduction or the foreword to, I want to say that it's the actual, it is the Dungeon Master's Guide. Yeah, that first page. If you read in there, he does talk about um, there being more standardization in Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. and I get that because at the time, with modules becoming something that TSR was cranking out yeah. more regularly, and yeah. another thing was tournament play at mm-hmm. conventions. There needed to be a standardization for people to move into a tournament and know what was going to happen. Yeah. But he does mention in the DM's guide, I mean, he hints at that, there, that there needs to be, you got to play kind of within the rules. But at the same time, he still does bring forward this idea that the game is yours. You're going to have to do what you want to do with it. Yes. And that, so, and that's, I, again, I, 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 I will defend Gary and say that that's kind of something that's unavoidable. That's going to sure happen at some point. Like this sure is when D and D was still very new, something very fresh. People hadn't been doing it, but as time goes by, it wasn't to the point where editions of the game got to in terms of standardization, where right. everything is the same, all set in the same world. You have to use all these rules in order to play. It was a it was a slow development to get there, and that's right. just you know this is the first step in that, and it is unavoidable. But at the same time, these, I think, before money was being made and his company was was becoming very, very successful, show how he always originally thought about things. And I, I, I would like to think mm-hmm. that he carried that concept forward. In his heart. Um, I, I, I like to think that he did. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, but then at the same time, he also recognized that he, was, he had a company now, he had salaries to pay. He had to have D and D be a money maker. One of the ways to do that was to standardize the game and have yeah. people buy the things that you were creating for it. But I like to think that he also would, if you had had a discussion with him somewhere, and I don't know, maybe he had these discussions with someone about playing, you know, towing the line, the canon line. Uh, I like to think that he, even though he was saying, yeah, it's standardized now, he would have said, oh, you played in a different way? Cool. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. As long as you're playing the game and using your imagination, that's what's important. But, but that's all I've got today. I just thought it was interesting. Uh, and if you get the chance, Alarums and Excursion, that's A-L-A-R-U-M-S and Excursions. Really interesting title. Look it up, Google it, uh, and you can purchase these. If you're really interested in the history, you can purchase these uh, PDF copies of the original typed magazine and are you mocking my my typing thing here um you can purchase these if you're really interested in the history of D, you can purchase these they are a very interesting read as far as i'm concerned and we'll be bringing you more information out of alarms and excursions as we go forward but i highly suggest suggest that you if you're in, really interested go pick these up you can contact lee gold and I think they cost for for a PDF copy of the original. I think it's like a dollar seventy eight cents, dollar eighty five, two dollars, so something like that. You why know, not? you know, um, for the for cost of a of a Starbucks coffee, you can well, get no. like no, no, for the cost of a Starbucks coffee, you can get like five of them. There it so, is. Yeah. Um, check them out if you're interested. But we will be we will be bringing you more as we move forward. That we will. So keep your eyes open for the future discussions of alarms and excursions. Yes. And if any of you. Um, disagree with what Gary Gygax has said here. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> if you disagree with it, let us know. Put it. Put something in the comments. But also, if you've got information somewhere else that contradicts what I just went Other over quotes, here, feel free. let us know. You know, I. But just you know, be nice about it, and also give us the source material that you're pulling it from. Yes, cite so, your cite your reason. Because I'm curious. I, I, I'm here to learn about this stuff, so I'm, I'm always happy to hear contrary views as long as they're backed up somewhere. Absolutely. So, thank you so much for watching. Look down I'm all... pointing a lot. The, at the, I'm pointing, doing this a lot. Check out the links below. Uh, a lot of good stuff down there. Website, uh, store, Instagram. Stuff. All those different things. There may be some changes to the links coming in the near future with yes. where things are located, yes. um, but none of those are going to be overly significant. We're going to change them on all the videos, so it'll just be the same place as everything else. Yes. Um, just kind of some clerical changes. I would yes, say. So I, that's, a good, that's a good way to put it. And any significant changes we make, we'll announce to you guys. We do have some fun stuff in the works coming up here soon, so keep your yes. eyes open for that as well. This is We're filming this in December of 2022. On... 
December 5th. December 5th. December of 2022. 5th. If you're watching this about that time and not three years from now, um, we will have some major changes to things in the first part of the year. We will, so keep your eyes open for that. Nothing too significant. We're still gonna have just as much fun as we always do. I think they're actually big changes. Well, they're big changes, but it's still it's not gonna affect you guys. Now. Yeah, 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 but yeah. it might be, I, we're hoping it's gonna be more interesting for you. Yes. Check the links. Let's point again. Let's point down below. Camera. Again. Click all of them. Look at all that we've got. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm Jim. I'm Alex. Keep your sword on free. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.